class, welcome back. I'm Dr. April Strom, and I have another example here to show you on U substitution. This one though, what's different about it is we have a definite integral here. As you notice, we've got boundary values here. We're gonna be integrating specifically from one to three, okay? And then if I look very closely at the integrand function that's hanging out here, we have a natural log x being divided by x. And just in case you're wondering, no, we cannot actually simplify those x's that are hanging out here, okay? This x on top as an argument is part of the natural log function itself. So that's like a package together. We can't separate that out. But here's what I can do. If you notice, um, this is kind of a, a clever notification here. What we can do is maybe rewrite this particular integral before we dive into the use substitution stuff. Let's rewrite this, say again, still one to three, of the natural log of x multiplied by one over x dx. Now this is just a rewrite. I haven't done anything to my problem except for I've just sort of separated that fraction of natural log x divided by x to be this, which is still equivalent, natural log x times one over x. And you'll see why that was kind of an advantage for us uh, to be able to do. All right, so here I want to try to figure out what my u might be, okay? So you've got some choices. Unlike the past videos, it was a little easy for us to be able to figure out what the inside function is, but here not so much. You might say the inside function maybe is an x. Well, certainly an inside function into the natural log x. But the thing is, if I let u be an x, that actually doesn't help our case at all for trying to simplify this problem to be a, a manageable integral problem, okay? So we actually never just wanna exchange out an x or a t by itself for the u, because that won't work for us, okay. But here's how we're gonna tackle this. And other options for the u may be one over x. That's an option. Another option for the u is maybe the whole natural log of x. So you kind of, you know, first glance, you're not sure exactly which one to go with. So just try one and see where you end up. And if it doesn't work for you, that's okay. Go backwards and try the other one. Okay. But here's a little um, pro tip for you. Remember back for the uh, use substitution when we were initially talking about the notation in the first video, I wanted to really hit for you guys the fact that we're gonna be multiplying by the derivative of some function. If I look closely, I see natural log x. If I take its derivative, hmm, well, that's actually one over x. That's a really nice thing to have happened for us. So. Because of that little thing that I noticed, let's let u be the natural log x. Let's kind of use that as our strategy. So I'll go back here and I'll say, u will be equal to the natural log x. Let's see where this leads us. Let's go ahead and again, take the derivative of that equation. So we have du equals, okay. So again, derivative of natural log x is one over x times dx, of course, right? That dx is still always there when we take the derivative of those equations. Okay, so if you notice though, check this out. I've got one over x here, and I come over here and I see I have a one over x here and also a dx, and as well as over here, dx. These two things are a nice even exchange for us that I can actually exchange out and call just du. And then natural log x can be exchanged out for just u. We can substitute that one right in. So here we go. So we're gonna say that this is equal to the integral. For the moment, I'm gonna leave off the one and three. Okay, you'll see why and I'll explain why in just a few minutes. So I'm purposefully not writing those numbers. So we're gonna have that this is gonna be equal to the natural log x, oh, let's let that be the u, multiplied by, well, instead of one over x times dx, let's call that du, okay? And just so that we're clear, I'm not writing these numbers one and three because those are boundaries that are specific to the x's. 
So these numbers one to three describe where I'm at on the X axis. I have a DX here, but once I substitute that out and call it something different like a DU, well, I, can, I have two options. I can figure out what my new boundaries would be relative to the U, or which is the route I'm gonna take here. I'm just gonna temporarily call this, just a, for right now, an A and a B. And then when I go into my, uh, subbing back in my X's, I will put back my ones and threes. So this A and B is just temporary for me, like placeholders, if you will. So I don't forget to put those numbers back in later. Okay. I can't just leave them one and three, by the way, right now, because technically they're not going to be equal to the statement above. So I literally do need to exchange those out. All right, so now here we go. We are ready to actually take the integral of this u du. Well, I love this. So just a reminder, this is a power, of course, of one. We reverse the power rule by adding one to the power, dividing by new power. So old power is a one, add one to it is a two, divide by two. So I have u squared, divide by two, right? Add one to the one, got two. One plus one is my two, that goes in the denominator. And of course you can check yourself right now, just find the derivative of this piece and you should get what you do, you back out again. Now I don't need to add my plus C right here because, well, we had boundaries. Now what I'm gonna do though in my next step is let's go ahead and put back what I know U to be, which is natural log of X. So I have that this is equal to natural log of X, but whole thing squared, and then whole thing divide by two. Now I actually do have my X's back in. So now I'm ready to think about, oh, I was actually integrating over the interval from one to three. So thus I need to evaluate my antiderivative from one to three. So here's when it's safe to actually put back in your X values once you have your X's back in again. See, this whole U substitution stuff is just temporary. So now we have this. So now what we would like to do is go ahead and evaluate my natural log X quantity squared divided by two expression from one to three. So per the fundamental theorem of calculus, it says that we go ahead and substitute in our three into our antiderivative function. So natural log of three quantity squared, of course, divide by two. And then I will subtract off the same process when I plug my one in for the X. So I have natural log of one quantity squared divide by two. And you can leave your answer just like this if you want. This is actually some number. This is what we would call the exact number, if you will. Um, but if you wanted the approximate number, you would just simply calculate in a calculator, even in Desmos if you like, to figure out that this value is approximately uh, 0 0.6034. 0. 6034. And I'm going to box all of this oops, so that we can see what is the approximation value and also the exact expression for that antiderivative from the beginning of this definite integral. So I hope you enjoyed that particular video. We have another example coming up for you that's even a more challenging example involving what we would call a complex substitution. So don't forget to click on the Advantage logo at the bottom to subscribe to our channel. Thanks.